Pluto is the faithful pup of Mickey Mouse, and other than a range of exaggerated facial expressions, is the sole non-anthropomorphic animal in the main roster of Disney's most lovable characters. Technically a mixed breed dog, Pluto represents a primitive non-evolved animal within the Disney universe, separating him from dog-like characters such as Goofy who appear more humanized. Regardless, Pluto's more animal-like behavior has led to some of the most important moments in the advancement of complex expression and action in animation, cementing the Disney studio as masters of character animation in the process. As a result, the Mute Pooch is one of the most lovable characters in Disney's lexicon and in 2020 will turn 90 years old. While Pluto's design may not have changed as drastically as other characters, his look, design and even personality have evolved very subtly over the years. On the verge of his 90th anniversary, I will trace the evolution of Pluto the Pup right from his first appearance in 1930 to today in 2019. To do so, we will look at the most important changes and moments prevalent across a selection of classic shorts and series in this edition of Explaining Disney. The most primitive version of Pluto appeared in the 1930 Mickey Mouse short The Chain Gang, which sees Mickey breaking out of jail and running into a nearby forest. Hot on his pursuit is an officer with two bloodhound dogs. While this isn't exactly the Pluto we all know and love today, these two bloodhounds animated by Disney artist Norman Ferguson show an early design of the character, most notably in body shape and facial design and expression. Note here that the character also appears more aggressive, with vicious eyes and a set of incredibly sharp fangs. Also worth noting is that he appears with ears that are the same colour as the rest of his body. While this character didn't go by the name Pluto and technically isn't exactly the same character, Walt Disney loved these bloodhounds so much that he decided to make them a fully licensed character and the Disney company recognises this as the first appearance of their iconic pooch to this day. In Mickey Short, The Picnic released that same year, Ferguson would once again play around with his pooch design, this time making the character appear more gentle, excitable and lovable. In other words, more Pluto. In The Picnic, Pluto goes by the name Rover and is introduced to us as the pet of Minnie Mouse. As a character that doesn't talk, The Picnic uses him in a series of gags, utilising physical comedy. These are the first signs of Pluto's trademark humour and our first glimpses of Pluto's playful personality. Note here that he appears with black ears for the first time, a defining characteristic of the character. In 1931, Mickey Short, The Moose Hunt, the character appeared for a third time. Here his physical appearance hasn't changed all that much, and by this stage he even still has sharp fangs. However, Moose Hunt is notable for being the first short in which the character is finally christened Pluto and is presented as the pet of Mickey. The exact reason for naming the character Pluto seems to have been lost to time, but it's strongly believed that he was named after the planet, which had only just been classified the previous year. The Moose Hunt is also worth noting for one strange occurrence. Pluto speaks for the first and only time. While Pluto's internal thoughts would be given narration in a later short, this is the first and only time he properly speaks in any Disney film. Strictly speaking, Pluto is considered all dog and is unable to talk and walk like the more humanised Goofy. This small anomaly, however, can simply be attributed to the character having not yet been properly defined. Through a process of trial and error, the storytellers felt that the act of speaking detracted from Pluto's personality and made him mute in future shorts. Pluto would again appear in 1931 in Mickey Short Blue Rhythm, which featured yet another strange anomaly. Here, Pluto appears more human-like than previously, sitting in Mickey's brass band playing the trombone. We can tell that by this point animators were still refining the character and finding his rhythm, as it were. Throughout 1931, Pluto would quickly become a staple of Mickey Mouse shorts, appearing in six that year alone, and would finally take shape as the more lovable, more dog-like pet of Mickey. Pluto was finally seen in more animalistic situations, dropping any human-like behaviour. By 1931's The Beach Party, it also seems that animators had stopped drawing him with sharp, fang-like teeth, and instead drew him with straighter, somewhat more human teeth. It's interesting to note that Pluto's design would stay practically the same for many years as he found himself up to plenty of hijinks alongside owner Mickey. 
In 1932's Silly Symphony, Just Dogs, Pluto would appear in a starring role for the very first time, placed around a cast of other dog-like dogs in a film that relied mostly on gags and character animation to tell its story. With no Mickey in sight, Just Dogs could technically be considered the first solo Pluto cartoon and likely was an experiment to see if the character could carry his own on screen. While his design continued to remain the same, Just Dogs can be pinpointed as the short where Pluto was drawn regularly without teeth. While he would be shown with teeth occasionally, usually when growling or in an extreme state of excitement, he would almost appear toothless for most of the shorts going forward. In 1934, Pluto would star in Playful Pluto, a short which Disney historian Michael Barrier would call a milestone in animation. Playful Pluto is a fairly stock standard Mickey Mouse cartoon, which sees Mickey trying to get on with some house cleaning, while Pluto causes a ruckus and gets himself into a series of troublesome situations. The short, however, went down in animation history thanks to one of its gags. The gag featuring Pluto getting himself entangled with a piece of flypaper is considered to be the first piece of animation to express personality through complex action as well as the first to take a simple situation and build the humour slowly through the actions of the character, something that would soon become a staple of Disney animated shorts, especially with characters like Pluto, Donald and Goofy. As a result, the gag is one of the very first examples of an animated character appearing to think on screen. Legendary Disney animator Frank Thomas noted that the key to making a believable character was to get them to think and puzzle out a situation, saying that Pluto was the ideal character to experiment with such character animation in the pioneering shorts. Thomas would say of the gag, so much depended on the building up of the situation and the pauses for Pluto to think about the different ways to get rid of the flypaper. Good expressions were necessary to build the gag or situation to a climax. The gag became so popular that Playful Pluto went on to become one of the most iconic Mickey Mouse shorts and likely the single most iconic Pluto moment of all time. 1935 short Mickey's Kangaroo would also feature a couple of small yet temporary departures from the character. In the final black and white Mickey Mouse short and thus Pluto's final black and white appearance, the tips of his ears strangely appear with straight ends instead of the usual rounded ends. This is also the short in which Pluto is given an inner monologue with his shorts narrated on screen for the only time. That's the last straw. I'll run him off the place. In 1935 short Mickey's Garden, Pluto appears in colour for the very first time, revealing his coat to be a brownish yellow complexion and his collar to be red. While this short would debut a slightly new Mickey Mouse design, Pluto's design remained mostly the same, even going back to rounded ears. That same year, Mickey's short Pluto's Judgment Day debuted and featured another radically redesigned Mickey. Where he previously had an asymmetrical design, he now had a pear-shaped body which allowed animators to employ squash and stretch animation techniques, giving him the ability to move more freely and realistically as if he had real weight and could abide by the rules of gravity. Following Mickey, most of the main Disney characters were also redesigned to allow for the use of the new techniques and to visually fit them in with the new style. Pluto, however, being a non-humanised character, didn't exactly undergo a radical redesign like the rest. Given his already stretched body, animators were able to employ squash and stretch techniques to Pluto fairly easily without changing his overall design. This wasn't incredibly noticeable, but on close inspection, it certainly allowed for slightly more realism in the character. In Donald and Pluto, the first Mickey Mouse short not to star Mickey, released in 1936, Pluto would again appear without Mickey Mouse and instead be paired up with Donald Duck. Donald and Pluto was built as an experiment to see how the two characters could work together as a comedy duo and to also see if they could work well in their own solo cartoons. The results were comedy gold and while both characters would debut in their own respective solo series the following year, the comedy pairing of Donald and Pluto would be utilised across five more Donald Duck shorts between the late 1930s and the mid 1940s. In fact, in the 1938 Donald short Beach Picnic, the classic flypaper gag would be recreated. The gag was such a favourite of Walt that he wanted to refilm it in colour. 
1937's Pluto's Queen Puppet will be the first solo short to bear Pluto's name on the title card. The short would establish him with a litter of pups and a love interest in Fifi, who was introduced as Minnie's pet dog in an earlier short. Pluto's Queen Puppets would be given the banner of a Pluto the Pup cartoon. However, he would not appear in another solo short until the 1940s. In 1939's Mickey Short Society Dog Show, Pluto underwent his most notable design change for the best part of the decade. However, in true Pluto fashion, the change wasn't immensely drastic in that his eyelids, previously a solid colour, became shiny. This was a fairly common practice for animation of the period and Pluto remained with shiny eyelids for the majority of his classic shorts going forward. In this short, Pluto also trades his red collar for a green one, which he would usually be depicted with in comic strips and marketing material. This would be one of only an incredibly rare few classic shorts to see Pluto wear a green collar. Pluto's next solo adventure was 1940's Bone Trouble, which is considered the official start of his solo series, now called Pluto instead of Pluto the Pup. Pluto's design remained the same here, just as it did for the majority of his classic run. Throughout the 1940s, Pluto starred in a series of incredibly popular and iconic shorts, as Disney continued to use him for somewhat silent, character animation driven gags, continuing to refine and experiment with the art of emotion in the animated film. During World War II, the Disney studio used Donald Duck as their main poster boy in a series of propaganda films and made Goofy their avenue for easy escapist comedy away from the battlefield. Mickey was put into a brief retirement in an effort to prevent tarnishing his innocent and childlike qualities. However, his faithful pup Pluto continued to flourish as a force for pure emotional comedy. While Pluto would continue to star in optimistic escapist features, Disney would still draft him into the army for a small string of shorts. However, these can be distinguished from Donald's propaganda films as they simply aim to take the situation of wartime and build comedic situations around it. After the war, Pluto's fame continued to rise, a lovable, relatable character who audience simply couldn't get enough of. In 1950 alone, Pluto would appear in more shorts than any other Disney character, starring in eight of his own. For comparison, in that same year, Donald Duck, Disney's biggest star of the time, would star in six, Goofy would star in two, and Mickey Mouse in none. After having appeared in 45 solo shorts and over 89 altogether, including Mickey, Donald and Silly Symphonies films, 1951's Cold Turkey marked the end of Pluto's own series, though he would receive two more starring roles in two 1952 Mickey shorts, Pluto's Party and Pluto's Christmas Tree, which just so happened to be two of the most iconic Pluto shorts of all time. Pluto would make his final classic appearance in 1953's The Simple Things alongside Mickey in his own final short, as the main Disney characters were put into retirement after the passing of Walt Disney. Holding his own right until the end, even while Mickey was going through a strange everyday guy phase, Pluto remained largely the same. Pluto wouldn't appear again until 1990's extended short The Prince and the Pauper, strangely skipping an appearance in 1983's Mickey's Christmas Carol, which was a return to theatrical Disney animation featuring their main cast of characters. In Prince and the Pauper, just as with every other character, Pluto once again appeared in his most iconic look, one that had barely changed for decades. In one short scene, however, Pluto would exchange his red collar for a red scarf. 1995's Runaway Brain, the first seven minute theatrical Mickey short since 1953, once again featured Pluto. However, he appeared for the first time in his history without whiskers or stubble. In 1999's series Mickey Mouse Works, Pluto's stubble reappeared for good, and for the first time in his history, his large black pupils would be made incredibly small. Pluto's shiny eyelids would also make a comeback. An episode of this series would also recreate the classic flypaper gag, except would trade flypaper for bubblegum, proving just how timeless Disney's classic character animation truly is. Through the entirety of the Mouse Works series, Pluto would be depicted with his green collar instead of his red. Strange Usually though, in that year's feature, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, he would be featured wearing his red collar, just as he would in 2004's Twice Upon a Christmas, where he would be depicted in his classic style, albeit for the very first time in CG animation. Once and Twice Upon a Christmas also added a small festive touch to Pluto's collar, styling it out with bells. 2006 series Mickey Mouse Clubhouse would also feature him in this same CG style, but would most regularly depict him wearing his green collar. In more recent years, 
Pluto has once again traded his green collar for his red in his latest cartoon iteration. In the later series of Mickey Mouse Disney Channel cartoon shorts by Paul Rudish, Pluto appears in his most stylized form ever, appearing almost as a caricature in his only major character redesign for close to 90 years. This design incorporates many nods to Pluto's design history. He shares the main characteristics of his classic appearance, where he retains his stubble and almost toothless look, and once again inherits his large black pupils, which appear as pie eyes, an animation technique used to depict light reflection that wasn't ever used on Pluto in his classic shorts. He would also once again appear with shiny, brown-tinted eyelids. In this design, Pluto also appears with straight-edged ears, an incredibly long body, and a strangely large tongue. Other than the 2013 design, Pluto remains one of the most unchanged characters in Disney's classic lineup, and will most likely remain the same with only small variations well into the future. Why did Pluto's design never really change and adapt as the others? We can probably put that down to him being the sole pet or animal character in the lineup. While animators pushed advancements in animation on the others as a way to make them more realistic and more human, Pluto never needed to be. Too many changes would make this playful pup too humanized, and his character simply wouldn't allow for it. And rightly so, as Pluto remains one of the most lovable animated animals of all time. And with that, it's over to you guys. I want to know what is your favourite Pluto appearance over the last almost 90 years. Fire away in the comments down below and let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also, don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.